Spot the dog is a good friend, a good friend. Uh, it's funny, I walked into the testing center, walked right by Spot, and Spot said, hey, and how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and thanks again for tuning into SketchUp Talk, the number one SketchUp podcast on the entire internet. Um, I am your host, Matt Robison, and with me, as always, is my other co-host, Aaron Dietzen. Hey, everybody. Welcome to SketchUp Talk. Awesome. <laughs> Good to this hear is... you once again. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, no, thank you for tuning into season four of SketchUp Talk, and what a great show we have for you today. We have one of our Trimble Zone uh, Ian Warner is here today, so we'll bring him on in a little bit. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a excellent show. It is. This is be cool. Do, do you? So uh, so yeah. Ian worked at Trimble with us, and he's he's kind of like so. When I first started at SketchUp, that was so that was five and a half, almost six years ago, and it was a couple years into Trimble owning SketchUp, and uh, I was talking to my boss about how you know. As we talk to customers, we have other deliverables we can throw out there now. We can we can mention some other stuff that Trimble does, and uh, basically he said, if you have any question about anything else Trimble does, here's this guy's email address. So just <laughs> just ask Ian. So that was Chris Dizon told me that basically Ian's the guy for any anything I need to know. So and I don't know if that's changed a whole lot. I think that uh, he still he still has like a little bit of information about. All kinds of things that Trimble does. Mm -hmm. He's the encyclopedia of all things Trimble. He is. And there is a lot of it. Uh, Trimble There's... has so many kind of Whew. crazy, like new technologies and all kinds of cool stuff going on. So, um, yeah. What do you say? You want to bring him on? Yeah. I think we introduced him enough. I think it's time to actually talk, let him defend himself. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, without further ado, please, uh, SketchUp Talk audience, welcome <laughs> Construction Solutions Architect, Mr. Ian Warner. Wow, that was awesome. What an intro. I'm going to do this every day. Just play it over and over again. That sounds good. Yeah, we'll get, you, get you right out of bed in the morning. How's it going? Yeah, I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? All right. So we, we actually had to, I mean, when people listen to this in line, they won't notice, but our recording, we had to actually bump it because you were actually traveling, which was, that's got to be something cool. Happy it was again. awesome. It was our first trip since COVID started and uh, did a two week road trip, 3,500 miles, 80 hours in the car, six states. We got all the big hitters in there. Uh, it was it was incredible. It was great. Yeah. Grand Canyon. Uh, wow. Up, uh, up on the coast on California, basically along Highway One for probably eight hours of California's coast. And, out to Wheeler State Park in Nevada. If you haven't heard of this place, there's uh, some of the oldest trees in the world are on Wheeler Peak. So somewhere between 3,200 and 4,800 years old. So absolutely incredible. Just a tiny little hike to get up there about seven and a half, seven and a half miles and traverse some snow crevasses and all sorts of good stuff. But uh, it was well worth it. Wow. that's That sounds like a nice full couple of weeks right there. Making up good. for lost time. Yeah, yeah, and we, and we needed to get away for a bit. And driving was probably the safest COVID uh, thing we could do at this point. So that's true. Good choice. Yeah. We're in that transitional period right now, where uh, yeah, maybe maybe airplanes aren't the best thing. So outside <laughs> still pref preferable, but yeah, yeah, that's good. That's a good plan. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was great. So thanks for thanks for putting this off and uh, putting all this together. Yeah. I love love working with you guys. Yeah, thanks for joining us. So so we we definitely threw out some ideas of what we think it is you do and <laughs> throughout your title. But we always like to say now, now why don't you tell us what it is you really do? Because uh, <laughs> sometimes our interpretation is a little bit colored. So, Yeah, no, I, I get that question a lot, which always worries me. Like, what do you do here? Right? It's the interview by the Bobs and I'm worried I'm, yeah. I'm going to get uh, yeah, eliminated because nobody knows what I do in general. But uh no, so uh, I do a little bit of everything, but uh, I enjoy most of it. So, <laughs> um, so I got brought on. At, you know, originally I worked for J. Dunn Construction, helped uh, build the Westminster Phase One building uh, back in 2012, 2013, and, and uh, loved what I saw and did a bunch of research on Trimble. I used Trimble for years and years and years prior to that. So I was really excited to come on board and, and uh, see what they were working on behind the curtain. And uh, that's right when they 
you know, they purchased SketchUp, they purchased Tecla, they've gotten the whole buildings portfolio put together. So uh, super exciting and love the, uh, the strategy and what we were putting together in the overall Trimble as well as connecting buildings with the civil operations, with the geospatial operations. And then I'm technically a farm boy from a kid from uh, growing up on my grandpa's farm as a boy and, and love the farm applications, the ag applications we have as well. And, uh, you know, know enough to be tiny bit dangerous on our transportation, but uh, yeah, really cool stuff that we're working on. So I uh, got lucky enough to uh, come on board and uh, helped out with a couple other building projects we had. And, you know, I think you guys are fairly familiar with the, the building we remodeled in Boulder for a, a soon to be future client. And uh, let's see, ARC expansion over in Dayton, Ohio. That was a really cool project that uh, wrapped up here recently. And we are working on a new building for Tecla over in Finland as well. So try to help on the, on the building projects, make sure we're implementing our own products on our own projects and take a lot of that feedback and give it back to the uh, product management teams. And try to make sure everything's working the way, you know, we say it should work and we think it should work and make improvements that way. So that's kind of a, that's a side gig. Um, work with a lot of the unions and trade schools across the country and across the world. Uh, that's, I was a member of the Carpenters Union for probably seven, eight years when I was with J.A. Dunn. And, uh, learned a lot there. That was after going to college and getting a couple couple degrees and a master's degrees, but uh, didn't didn't uh, uh, know everything there is to know. Right, you're never going to know everything there is to know. So got to go uh, go through their apprenticeship program, and actually that's where I took some of my first double station classes. Was in the carpenters program and through their apprenticeship classes. And that was great. So I try to give back to those folks as much as possible and uh, work with a lot of universities, curriculum development, and. Uh, recommendations on those sides um, do some product management in there somewhere I think and key accounts and uh, yeah just wherever I can fit in I love playing with the toys man that's why I'm here it's it's uh, most of this is is uh, super fun honestly yeah oh absolutely wow. and it, that, like I wasn't there for the first uh, Westminster building to go in but for the second one and I assume it's kind of the same like just being there when that building was going up how many Trimble, like you said, toys were kind of around and people were testing stuff out and put it like everything that, you know, Trimble building construction uh, does was being like implemented on that building. And I feel like it was so cool to see, you know, really walking the walk of like, you know, this is exactly what, you know, for our own, own um, you know, home turf, we're employing the, the latest and greatest and kind of all these integrations that, um, that really make that work. Uh, you know. Yep. Yeah. So, um, go ahead. I was gonna say it's it's great to have those projects right in your back door, and, and folks can just literally walk out of their office, walk out of their cubicle, put on some hard hats and safety safety vests and all their PPE, and get on the job site and go look exactly how people are working on on their tools, and you know, see some gaps or uh, see some workflows that need to be improved, or a couple extra buttons we can eliminate. And, yeah, doesn't sound like much, but if you eliminate one to two seconds per user times, you know, 10 to 20,000 users across the world, it, it adds up pretty quick. So hopefully we're making not only just, you know, transformational changes, but also incremental changes that make a huge difference. That's awesome. It, it sounds like uh, if I had to go back and re-summarize, you're, <laughs> you're kind of like uh, a, a, a Trimble evangelist, um, uh, advocate. Uh, I don't know. I, I think one of the things I think is really cool is that that Trimble does have uh, so much, you know, dirt under their fingernails to be, I mean, to use a, it, it, I know it kind of sounds like a joke because <laughs> dirt, agriculture, whatever. Um, <laughs> but the fact that they do, they work closely with people using their products. It's not like they create something, shove it out the door and then, uh, yeah, let's know how that goes. The yeah. fact that they actually have the, the, you know, people like you out in the field using it with customers or, or, you know, hands on teach We, I, not too long ago when we thought we were going to have a uh, base camp in 2020, we went up to Vancouver and they were going to send somebody up to one of the things we did was we did some scanning in the Vancouver Convention, Convention Center and they were going to send somebody to do that scanning. And it was you. You spent like two days walking around the Convention Center with a scanner and like, like, like seriously, like being on site and actually using the products. I think that's pretty cool because I don't I don't know that a lot of companies do that kind of work. 
Right. Yeah. And that was an awesome project too. I can't wait till we actually have our uh, base camp there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if we can get to that. Yep. Okay. All right. <laughs> but yeah, no, awesome oh, yeah. project. And that was actually the X7 scanner before we released it. So we actually used that for some beta test uh, sample scans and, uh, you know, validation of uh, the workflows. And I think the Vancouver staff got to see some of the, uh, the capabilities before it was even released to the public. So that was a great opportunity, great city, loved it up there. I was really excited about the base camp coming up. And so hopefully we'll be able to continue that here shortly. But yeah, that was a cool project and loved working with the whole team over there. Uh, Aubrey herded, herded the cats very well. She did a great job. <laughs> so yeah. so I, <laughs> we're both, Matt, Matt and I are trying to be polite and let the other person talk. So go ahead, Matt, go ahead. Um, yeah, so I just kind of going back to maybe what Trimble does or like, you know, it sounds like you have this sort of unique position uh, to be able to always be um, kind of connecting the, what happens in our office to what happens in the field, like the, the, you know, connecting the physical and digital worlds kind of thing that I think is like a sort of a goal of Trimble's, um, you know, transforming the way the world works, we've all heard, but um, like what, what, what do you like most about kind of being able to get out there with people and show them how that connection uh, happens? You know, do you, do you get, get a lot of people kind of in awe or like wowed by the, the stuff that they can, that they can do that they didn't know they could? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, I mean, we've got so many great people at Trimble and, you know, super smart folks. I'm, I'm just lucky to be here and be able to, uh, get, work with all those different teams. So being able to take that out to a lot of these contractors that maybe haven't seen it or the schools or the unions or any of those types of folks, right? They get in there, everybody's the same thing. Like I always ask, how's, how's your world? Because everybody's basically surrounded in their own world. And you don't necessarily step out, especially during COVID over the last year and a half, you know, we've all got kind of uh, pigeonholed into whatever we're doing at that point in time. So um, it's hard for us on the internal side just to keep up with all the changes. You know, SketchUp has a new release all the time now. Every program we have has, has uh, incremental releases and agile development. So trying to keep up with that internally is hard enough, let alone trying to explain that to customers and, and uh, professors and instructors and everybody else around the world. So um, I love that interaction. I love seeing the, the light bulb just kind of turn on when you, you start to show them these, these new tools and the buttons and they start thinking of new ways to, to use it and come up with possibilities that, you know, we, we haven't even thought of because everybody's got their own touch points in their own world. And, you know, from stage design to, you know, using SketchUp for agriculture, right? Most people wouldn't even think about doing that, but it's perfect to mix grain silos and barns and stuff is already in there. And the farmers that may not be 3D modeling experts can just go in the warehouse and go grab a farm or go grab a silo and drop it in and start, start becoming a uh, 3D modeling expert. And then if we start showing them how to inter integrate scanners or GPS or total stations, and now they can get that precise layout for their 3D model. Uh, I mean, it just, it's just astronomically impressive just to see how, how it all comes together. And so, yeah, I love seeing the light bulbs come on. And, and uh, that's a one of the reasons I, I teach a lot of classes and I, I still do that just because I, I love it. It's just, it, uh, it's cool. It's, it's really fun to, to pass on that knowledge. Well, so you, so you mentioned you came on just about the time that Trimble got uh, Tecla, SketchUp. So, those were some of the first software acquisitions, if I'm correct, that uh, Trimble did. Previous that was primarily hardware. I don't know. No, I think there there was a few other. There's quite a few other uh, software acquisitions prior to that, and the other other divisions. But those were the primary, I'd say, base points for the the buildings division. And mm -hmm. so, you know, with with uh, uh, the capabilities and the user uh, uh, format that we had already with SketchUp, that was phenomenal. And some of the capabilities within Tecla and getting down to that nut and bolt and screw level of detail. Putting those two together with our, our positioning technologies, you know, seems like a no-brainer, but uh, we actually got it done back in 2012, 2013, and then have been slowly perfecting it over the last, you know, 10 years or so. So it's been great. That's pretty cool. So, so how, much, how much of your world is hardware versus software? I mean, how much, what do you think you focus on or where do you spend most of your time? Well, uh, the hardware doesn't doesn't do much good without the software, unfortunately. So we can press a lot of buttons on there, but uh, it really doesn't do anything. So, you know, I, I always kind of uh, equate myself to a hardware guy. Like that's just kind of my shtick, I guess. But uh, uh, it's all dependent on the software that goes with it. So um, like our development team on Trill Field Inc. has uh, 
done phenomenal things over the last uh, six to eight years here, you know, from just basic total station improvements and being able to take in 2D documents at first and then 3D models and then heavier 3D models. And now we can take uh, 2D PDFs and 2D models and 3D models and combine them all into one. And now we can actually laser scan right on top of those, those images or those base files. Uh, being able to do that on the field is is incredible. I mean, that was space age technology and sci-fi, you know, ten years ago. So uh, the team that's putting that together is is done a phenomenal job, and really proud of those guys over there. That's awesome. And yeah, well, I, I, I'm generalist on pe yeah. people. <laughs> people, people, they. Got guys means people now. I th I'm pretty sure. That's, that's... I'm a Kansas farmer. I can't help it. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I, I just got to say, so as, as somebody who's worked in software their entire professional career, the idea of having a physical product you can represent, that sounds pretty, pretty fun and exciting. I've always had a bit of envy for, for, you know, like going to trade shows and we're software guys. We walk in with like our laptop and then the other guys come into the booth with all these yellow cases and start setting up stuff. I'm like, oh, I want a tripod for something. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. The tactile options are, are very beneficial. <laughs> it is pretty cool to have a thing that you're, that you get to work with. Yeah. That's, that's definitely cool. Especially now that we're getting into uh, full robotics and uh, you know, the future and autonomy are wide open for us. Have you, have you met spot? Have you hung out with, with spot? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, we're, we're great friends. Uh, as long as it doesn't wake up in the middle of the night and come over to the bedside, I'll be all right. But <laughs> yeah, um, Spot the Dog is a good friend, a good friend. Uh, it's funny, I walked into the testing center, it was probably four weeks ago, and walked right by Spot, and Spot said, hey, Ian, how you doing? <laughs> and it was actually Darren down in New Zealand who had piped into uh, Spot, and he was controlling it autonomously from New Zealand. And, uh, you know, had, had the camera on, had the speaker and microphones on, and I'm sitting there talking to my, my new, new, new dog friend, basically, uh, which, is, which was really cool. Scary at first because I didn't know what the hell was happening. But, uh, yeah, when Spot sneaks up on you from behind like that and starts talking to you, it's, uh, oh, it's a new man. experience. <laughs> well, Aubrey just put in the chat that because uh, people who are listening won't be able to see this, but Base Camp is scheduled right now to happen September 26th through 30th, 2020 in Vancouver. And uh, we're, we're going to have to do what we can to get Spot to come down and, and hang out at the at that show. So, Spot, Rover, all the, all the friends. Yep. Yeah. So you'll, you'll be our in. You'll, you'll be able to take our invite to uh, our our digital Trimble digital pet. That'd be perfect. Or, or division. <laughs> we'll get them all strapped together and see if we can uh, create like a, a robotic dog sled competition. I think that'd be great. Yes. Nice. Oh, perfect. Yes. We can, yes. We can design the sled in SketchUp. We'll create the course from the scan you already did of the Vancouver Convention Center. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So yeah, we, this is going to happen. I, I feel perfect. good about this. I like I'm it. Sure Tr I'm sure Trimble will be good with, with us playing that way with all their hardware too. <laughs> It'd be fine. It'd be fine. <laughs> just testing, pushing it to the limit. You know? That's right. That's right. It's just, that's right. Uh, was that quote from Einstein? This is, if, if we knew what we were doing, we wouldn't call it research. So, yeah. <laughs> I like it. R and D. Yeah. We're part of the R and D group now. We've got to go break things to make sure it works. <laughs> well, cool. Cool. Um, so, so I'm sorry. I, I just I have a lot of questions written down. So I'm sorry, Matt. I'm jumping in again, but you can go no next. Worries. I promise. Um, so, I guess I guess I got two questions wrapped up here. Like like over of of all the products you've shown, you represent. Like, what is your all time favorite? And maybe kind of set apart from that like what's your your favorite thing that you're that's coming out now like what is the cool thing that you're like ooh, i'm excited for people to know about this mm, okay i'm gonna separate those probably into two separate products so mm. i'd have to say my favorite product is the robotic total station uh, just because that's what brought me to Trimble in the first place that's uh what i got used to it when i was working at jay dunn out in the field and laying out buildings and uh you know we, we used to do this by hands with tapes and chains and and you know gigantic cave man oh, man but, well sure. it's, still, it's still happening today and it works sometimes most of the time hopefully <laughs> yeah but uh that robotic total station 
I, I preach this all the time to every class I ever teach, but there's no better way to go ensure that you're actually going to build a project the way that according to the drawings or documents or specifications or anything else other than a robotic total station. Being able to take that PDF or a 3D model or 2D, you know, 2D line work or whatever it is and go pinpoint it down to a sixteenth of an inch, you know, at a thousand feet is just incredible. So that's that's the mainstay, I think, is of my career over the last 10, 15 years, and then getting into laser scanning. Um, I'd say that the thing I'm the most excited about right now, well, there's two, there's two, I'm gonna throw these both out there, but the X7 laser scanner, um, I think that's truly incredible. And the, the workflow is so simple, I can train somebody in like an hour now to actually go and laser scan, which, you know, the, I don't know, 10 years ago, it'd take me a week worth of classes to try to figure out the software, let alone the hardware and the processes and making sure everything comes together. So, I mean, Taking five days down to one hour is just incredible. That's um, and the, the reality capture that you get off that and the, the data that you get out of there is so accurate that you can use that forever, basically, for your, your basis of remodels or maintenance or, you know, creating a 3D model in SketchUp or just doing a little bit of, uh, uh, I think you guys were, were looking at uh, trying to work with uh, some of the prop designers and set designers and some, some of those types of applications for for the Vancouver Center, and without that 3D model, they're kind of they're gonna have to make numerous trips up to Vancouver, and, mm -hmm. you know, spend a bunch of money on hotels and flights and tape measures and maybe some some disto, you know, laser tools to take some rough dimensions in there. Whereas we can just pass them a laser point cloud or a 3D model, and they can make that decision pretty quickly without much in, much input. So pretty nice. That's one of my favorites right now, and uh, XR10 with the Hololens device is another favorite of mine right now as well. So that's uh, starting to gain quite a bit of traction in the, in the industry. So being able to take that 3D model, put it on your head, overlay the 3D model on the real world, scale it down into a tiny section, throw it on your desk, zoom into the area you want, and then say, yep, I'm going to align this room with the room I'm in, and then press a button to automatically align it right to uh, a real world in a one-to-one -one scale. I mean, it's that's that's the one that really blows people's socks off right now. And uh, you talk about the trade shows and, and going out and going to teach classes or whatever, like literally every reaction I get on the first time they put that on their head is, oh my God, this is freaking unreal. And mm -hmm. just uh, space age stuff that, uh, you know, we saw back in 1970, what was, what was Star, Star Wars? Was that 74? Yeah, Star Trek, 75, yeah. Somewhere in there, yeah. yeah. We can only dream of it now, then, and now we're, we're making it reality. So I love it. Doing it. <laughs> I'm just a picture with the you know selfie with it on. I'm like, yeah, you got to. You know, it's, so it's far, funny you say that because the day of this recording, um, 44 years ago today was when New Hope released into theaters. Oh wow! So, oh. Fun bit of trivia, y'all. There so, you go. Perfect. You, everybody can say they learned something today. Well, I mean, hopefully they learn a lot more than that. <laughs> <laughs> every day, every day. Nice. And, uh, you know, there's so much cool stuff that outwardly is like um, people can see about Trimble, right? Whether it is the devices or the software stuff. But um, I think there's a lot of cool stuff that Trimble does internally, too, that kind of sets it apart from other companies that I worked at and uh, is really cool. Like, for instance, um, the rotational program. I know you've kind of worked with that or helped out with that in the past. And um, I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about what the rotational program is and kind of what your involvement is uh, yeah, definitely. No, uh, rotation program is just a phenomenal program. I wish, I wish I could have done that actually. Maybe when I first came to Trimble, but uh, I recommend it for any of our students or any of the folks that are in the universities or unions that are looking at trying to come into Trimble. That rotation program, if you can get in, it's highly selective, obviously, but it's a great program. And almost everyone that's gone through that program are, are superstars within Trimble. So. Uh, had the opportunity to work with Amy Hayes quite a bit and help her on the recruiting side for some of the universities. And then I try to jump in wherever I can with the rotation students. And recently got the opportunity to work with a group on a uh, Dreamer hack submission. So it wasn't selected. I still think it's one of the best ideas. I can't give it out to you right now, but uh, just a super excited group. Of, of, you know, you want to call them students. They're not students. They're in the real world now. But uh, you know, they get the opportunity to go through four different positions within Trimble, six months of each position, so a two-year overall program. And they try to switch it up as much as they can so that you can get different positions and different divisions and kind of get a full depth and breadth uh, review of the, the entire company, you know, as much as you possibly can within two years. So 
great opportunity for them to meet people, to understand the industries, to, to get uh, different perspectives and different job opportunities, right? A lot of times if you go to go to work for a, uh, an industry or company, they have a job selected for you and they're going to keep you in that job as long as they possibly can. Whereas this gives you an opportunity to go test around within one company and see, okay, maybe I, maybe I like numbers a little better than, or I like product management, or I have the gift of gab and I want to be in sales. And, you know, you may not know that until you actually get the experience and the time to, to go play. So um, yeah, great program, great uh, folks that are involved in the whole program. Um, yeah. And recommend it for anybody if you get the opportunity. That's cool. Cause yeah, I, I, it's, it's, it's amazing to me that uh, more companies don't, put that much energy into, you know, the next generation. Cause it, it really is cool. And, and every, I, I, so we recently hired an intern in our group. And uh, so I've been learning about the intern program that, that Trimble has and the, the rehire rate. So people come in as college interns, I think something like 60 to 70% of them come back and get a full-time job afterwards. So it's, it's that's, awesome. That's a, I mean, it, that's it's, a pretty good hit rate. <laughs> it's impressive. It's an impressive number to say a majority of people who come by once come back. So that's, that's, right. that's pretty cool. Yeah. And, and they want to stay. That's a, that's a great sign. <laughs> the other great sign is uh, if anybody's listening and has, has anybody that's looking for internships over the next couple summers, good reason to apply. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We're doing something right. I, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, something I forgot to mention on the rotation program. Each of those folks that actually goes through that two-year program, they're required to do a supplemental project. So uh, some of the folks I'm working with are actually working on some overviews of each of the divisions and going in, into the divisions and looking at, you know, the mainstays on the products and, and uh, you know, any threats or issues or any issues uh, they may have or, you know, kind of giving an overview of each division individually. And then they're going to actually share that information across the other rotation students as well. So if they didn't get enough um overview of the entire company over the last six months or two years while they're in there, they at least can learn from each other and, and uh, try to capitalize on, on that information. That was awesome. Yeah. And the rotation program, like, you know, another, um, another place that students might get uh, an introduction to Trimble is the Trimble Technology Labs too. Um, and if people aren't familiar with these, they're just like, they're at universities and kind of uh, you know the new newest and coolest Trimble uh, hardware and software is there for people to kind of put it all together and uh, really test stuff out and get a hands-on experience. And um, so, have you had experience with? Uh, have you been into any of the Trimble Tech Labs? Have, what's what's it what's it like in there? Yeah, no, I've been to uh, most of them. Actually, well, I shouldn't say most of them. The majority of them. Um, we actually have one right here uh, up at CSU in Fort Collins, and we've been working with them for over five, six years now. Uh, we've actually sponsored boot camps up there and, and uh, created courses. Uh, so they have uh, specific courses up there where it's a one credit hour, but you go for five classes. So this last spring semester, Chris Brazier actually took the lead on this one, and we did a, a SketchUp focused uh, boot camp on this last one. So what it really does is we got the opportunity to one, we created a lab space up at CSU where we have almost every Trimble software they can ever think of basically provided on the computers in that lab. And then we also provided a bunch of hardware for them for free as well as training and, and uh, curriculum development. So uh, if we don't actually have classes, though, that inter interject those, those technologies to the students, they may not necessarily pick them up or we need to get in there and actually kind of upskill the professors as well, right? They're, they're busy. They have a full-time job. So learning a brand new software just for one class is kind of a big ask. So if we can come up there and help them implement that software into the program, it makes a huge difference. So mm -hmm. Chris Brazier kind of took the lead on this last one in spring. And, and what we did was make sure to had each of the students design their own tiny home, right? Kind of best based on a tough shed type of layout. But, you know, we took them from very basic. Almost everyone was at a, like a zero to a two out of 10 on the, on the SketchUp scale, on the BIMJA scale and whatever you want to call it there. <laughs> um, and by the end of it, they were actually, uh, they created scenes. We imported uh, uh, 3D backgrounds and terrain models, and they created videos. They broke everything down by the tags and separate, uh, separate, I won't call them layers. I'm not going to call them layers. Don't, don't, don't punch me here. <laughs> <laughs> Put a dollar in the L jar. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, 
you know, taking the students and, and basically showing them how to take those those buildability skills, the constructability skills, turn that into a 3D image that then they can convey that information and change it a lot more easily and, and uh, produce something that they can actually go actually build at their own, their parents' home or their own home or build for a, uh, um, you know, a charity or something like that to auction or, you know, we can literally create tiny homes for the homeless, you know, so all, all sorts of different applications. So that was really cool. Uh, we did have John Brock came in and did a presentation to show those students like, hey, you guys are designing tough sheds. Here's where you're, here's what happens when you take to the next level and seeing some of the work he's doing out there out in Virginia on those, you know, custom multi-million dollar homes is absolutely incredible. So that was kind of showing them the end state about the third class in so that they didn't get scared and think, oh yeah, SketchUp's, you know, I, I don't know how to use it quite right. So it, it won't do what I want it to do. John and his team were able to take that to the next level. And they provided some of the uh, the tools that uh, he utilizes within SketchUp to the students as, as well for free. So that uh, John Brock's done that with uh, Estimator and a few other extensions. Medik uh, with his extensions have done that. Um, other Aaron for the cabinet maker. I think that was the other extension that's been provided to some, some students out there. So that's been just awesome to awesome to get that collaboration from a lot of the SketchUp. Uh, uh, I don't know what you're gonna call that, but the the universe basically from all the all the uh, folks out there that are the community, uh, our community, our team. The universe better is more that's, all in. It's bigger. It's bigger. Yeah. Space Force. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no, that was great, and everybody's been been great to work with, and, and we really love that. The students loved it. Uh, Brazier did a great job kind of leading that uh, that old charge. So that was a lot of fun, and we try to do that a lot at the Triple Tech Labs. So provide the, the software for free for the students to use, try to get them some curriculum so they can implement it into various courses, um, and then get them on the hardware too, because that's really where, you know, literally the rubber meets the road, right? That's how we, we can take those models out to the field. I had coffee this morning, so I'm, I'm talkative. That's good. No, that, that's how you're supposed to be. That's I mean, <laughs> podcast. People are sick of hearing me. They want to hear you. That's not that's not what they're here for. Um, no, I think that's cool. It's I mean, and it goes back to that same thing I was saying. Is like it's it's so cool to have a company that that wants to invest in that next generation. You know, because um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pick on construction. I'm gonna be straight up honest about this. Construction in particular is a slow moving animal, does not adapt, adapt change very quick. And um, I've, I've totally heard, uh, I did not say this, <laughs> but I've heard people say, well, the only way we're going to change the construction process is to wait for a whole generation to retire. Like, that's it. Like, because there's so many things that are ingrained and entrenched in how, how stuff works, that getting that new group coming in. To, to have access to not saying they have to use this, but you know, just get them thinking that there's different ways to do things out there. You know, that doesn't, that doesn't mean they're being locked into to SketchUp or Tecla or Trimble products, but, but at least they're, they're looking at, Oh, there's a, a way that's different to do it than the way it's being done now. I think that's the thing I get most excited about is, you know, opening up what could be done in the future. Yeah, no, it's it's great. And if they don't get that exposure, right, it, it doesn't matter if they stay in SketchUp, much like you're talking about, right? It's just knowing that that tool exists, and and now you have another tool in your belt that you can go to utilize, and you know, hopefully, help you make more money and be more successful and keep people safe. That's probably the biggest thing here, on, especially on the construction site that people forget about. But the industries we serve, agriculture is probably one of the most dangerous uh, industries in the world. Uh, construction is a very dangerous industry. Civil civil construction is a very dangerous industry, right? So the more we can automate, the more we can streamline the workflows, the safer people are going to be. And that's that's kind of the, the end goal throughout all this. Uh, I think that Sorry, like that I, I'm, good. Cool. I'm good with it. No, I mean, I, know I think we should just all sign off on it now and uh, yeah, make it. Yeah, that's good. You good, Matt? We're good? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I will say on the on the comment for like the older generation retiring, I think we've got a lot of folks, uh, especially in the construction industry, there they may have been reluctant for quite a while to get into into technology, but now I don't think there's the excuses are becoming far and far between. Um, you know, everybody's getting a new cell phone every two years. They can figure that out. They can figure if they can figure out a cell phone now, you can pretty much figure out how to use SketchUp or how to use connect or how to use the XR10 or how to use the, the scanners, right? It's, we've really made it 
hopefully that that's simple for most people to implement and, and take on board. It's just taking the time to learn it. So that's why I'm up on the soapbox saying, hey, we got to have more training. We got to have more uh, more education classes out there, more online learning opportunities. Um, I will say, I know uh, Basha Ballard's team for the Learning Solutions team has uh, really worked really hard on Trimble, um, uh, learn.trimble.com. And so anybody that's listening that hasn't logged in to learn.trimble.com, go get it. There's actually an app for your phone. So now if you're out in the field and you don't remember how to do something with your GPS or GNSS or you want to you know, set your phone up because your computer's, uh, you only have one, one uh, screen on your computer. You can actually set your phone right there and watch the tutorials right on your phone and learn how to model or do whatever you need to on the field. So another, another great op opportunity to uh, take that learning and that education to the next level and take it with you wherever you go. That's awesome. I, point. I didn't know that. I will be didn't downloading you? that after this. Let me see if I can. Look I said we app. had the app. I should probably tell you which app it is, right? <laughs> Go learn. Go learn. Go learn. And then you look for the Trimble application and uh, get that downloaded. And it keeps all your, your login information from, from previous logins. So should be good to go. Perfect. You heard it. Ian said, go learn. Go learn. <laughs> App available on iOS and Google and whatever else stores are out there. I like it. Awesome. Well, so I, 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 I am, I am curious because, you know, you talked about working on jobs and that kind of stuff. Is there, is there a specific job you've, you've been to, or you've been on where like, I don't know, I guess good or bad. Like what's, I, wanna, <laughs> I guess I kind of want a horror story, but at the same time, I want to like, what's the coolest job. But at the same time, like, what's the one where you're like, oh boy, well, that can never happen again. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's actually why I joined Trimble. <laughs> I got tired of all the horror stories. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things where you can, if you, after you've done construction long enough, you can kind of pick, pinpoint where you're going to have obstacles and issues, and you know, subcontractors don't get along, or uh, you know, quality control issues. So, uh, being on this side of it, I think we can really help to eliminate some of those issues uh, fairly quickly. Um, nightmare projects, uh, man, I didn't know we we're going to have to air dirty laundry on here. You don't say any names. No, I was, I was just, I was going to ask about the good ones, but then my, you know, that part of me that's wondering, like, what about the bad ones? <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll stay away from the nightmares for right now. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. What's the good one? What's we'll the big impressive job? What's the big if you, impressive? If you want to nightmares, just watch the news. That's that's fine. <laughs> oh, there's enough of that out there. Yeah. Um, no, I think uh, some of the best projects I've been on. Um, you know, I, th I think that SketchUp building was really fun. Uh, the building we did in Boulder uh, it was a great building. I wish we could have moved in, but uh, yeah. you know, unfortunately, COVID hit and changed uh, changed the dynamic and changed how everybody's going to work. I think from here on out. So, yeah. uh, but that was really cool seeing the design all come together in SketchUp. We actually laser scanned the project before uh, we even owned it. So they they were nice enough to let us come in on nights and weekends, and we laser scanned the entire project. I think it was like 360 scans because it was broken down to you know, every every office was about eight by ten feet. Uh, so a ton of laser scans and a ton of registration time back on the back end and putting all that together because this was before the X7 was released. Uh, but then we used that as the basis of design and everything seemed to come together fairly well and uh, beautiful project all, all all came together pretty seamlessly. Um, Vancouver scan just a beautiful building at Vancouver Convention Center. I, Mm -hmm. I think of laser scans as art. I think they're just beautiful. So when I look at the stars at night, I see point clouds. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I was just joking saying, about, uh, so, so we've, I mean, we recently uh, released Scan Essentials, which yes. went out. It's now part of uh, SketchUp Studio that, that is available. Um, but, but I always, I always get this thing where I, I kind of crack up because there's this different, th everybody likes point clouds. They're cool, but there's this different way of thinking about them, right? Because the, the hardware guys, you guys, I'm going to make a division. I'll tell you that right now. Hardware guys come in and they're like, oh, it's great. It does like 70 billion points in a second. <laughs> and software guys are like, why do we need more than like 6,000? Like <laughs> a, a wall, you can define a wall with three points. It's a triangle. It's there, you know, like, so it's, it's always funny to like try to find 
where's the happy medium? I guess eventually you get a point cloud so dense it becomes solid and then it's a solid thing. I don't know if that's the eventual goal, but uh, it, it, it does crack me up because, and this is not just you, Ian. This is, I, I've worked with several people at Trimble who are like, oh, it's great. Like they're just talking about all this data. Yeah, I had to, I had to upgrade my computer to handle this point cloud. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully those days are over and uh, yeah. I think Scan Essentials is going to make a, make that hopefully a reality. So mm -hmm. I've been able to run that on the Surface Pros and, you know, not beefy laptops. Actually, the laptop I'm using right now is seven and a half, almost eight years old. And I can crunch anything I need to on point clouds still with that computer. But I also use the, the Surface Pro out, out and about. And the new That's Scan Essentials awesome. app works on there great. I mean, I can run fairly large point clouds and mm -hmm. model right in SketchUp right off that uh, off those point clouds. So that has been phenomenal and, and hopefully it reduces that whole, uh, you know, obstacle to incorporating point clouds mm -hmm. into the design workflow. So now that we can do that on fairly reasonable laptops. Um, yeah. You know, it makes a huge difference. I know when I first got into laser scanning like 15 years ago, we literally had to have you know our own tower computers that we would take either with us to the project we were scanning or when we got it back, that's that's the computer we have to use and no other computers could be used. No other programs could be used at the same time while you're processing the point clouds. So <laughs> I'm glad those days are over because that little blue circle of death about killed me. Oh, I don't man. Times. <laughs> it's good. I, I think we're at that, that spot where... Uh, information and functionality are like right they're coming together and and it is it is super cool to like pull up a point cloud in sketchup and and if you guys haven't anybody's listening hasn't seen it check out scan essentials check the demo out it's it is really cool to be able to just see that in there and have it perform i mean there's not like like i know what you're talking about we're seeing software where okay pull up a cloud we're going to turn it and now hold on let it redraw itself and, and okay, now we're turn again. And that's, it just doesn't happen anymore. It's, it's very cool to be, to be caught up with the concept of, of what laser scanning could give us. It's, it's yeah. awesome. Yes. Yes. I hope, I hope our laser scanners aren't getting 70 billion points in a second. <laughs> okay. I, I may have just thrown out a big number. I don't remember the exact numbers, but uh, it's a big, yeah. that's a big number. That's a big it's, number. There's, yeah. A lot of points, a lot of points. <laughs> So we can just get 70 billion uh, every month in this infrastructure bin spin bill. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be great. Awesome. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, I think we're, uh, we're getting, we're getting closing in on the hour. So um, Ian, is there, is there any parting words you would like to throw out? Is there any, any uh, final thoughts you would like to throw out on your way out? Uh, I would just say, yeah, never stop learning and, and keep trying to uh, keep up with the change. You know, just jump into any class you find you can and, and uh, try to go learn. So the more you know, the more you can uh, you can affect change. So let's, let's, like let's go do it. I like that. Awesome. Make the, world, make the world a better place. I like that, too. That's a Beautiful. good sentiment. That's, appreciate it. <laughs> well, hey, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thanks for your time and thanks for your expertise. Definitely, definitely. Do we have any questions or anything we need to? Uh, nothing came. I you you did too good of a job. You you answered concisely. That's you oh, gotta wow. really you gotta leave a lot of gaps in your re replies in order to get good questions. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did great. So, wow. Well, I think we're we're there. Sweet. We did it. We made a podcast. That was that was uh, relatively painless. You guys lied to me. So, I thought it was gonna be, yeah. I thought it was gonna hurt. I thought I was gonna be on camera. I have to have slides. Oh, I no, like this no. podcast thing. This is easy. Keep it easy. It's a SketchUp talk. We just come in here and talk. That's it. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't have a beer in me, or otherwise, it'd be another uh, 10, 20 minutes. That's a, That's the evening edition. We do that. <laughs> <Yeah. all> <laughs> we should try that. SketchUp it's with beers. Lot, it's a lot longer, and uh, yeah, little maybe PG thirteen. <laughs> awesome. heated discussions that's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. cool awesome well thank you very much ian uh appreciate your time and uh can't wait to have you on something again in the future awesome thank you guys thanks for putting all this together and you guys do a great job love listening to you guys all right thank thanks, you very ian. much all right appreciate it. take care yeah and thank you guys for listening uh we appreciate your uh participation in the SketchUp community. Um, so yeah, if you're not already subscribed to us on the podcast app of your choice or on YouTube, um, check us out there uh, for previous episodes and for a bunch of other uh, learning content. And um, yeah, 
Thank you so much for listening to this episode of SketchUp Talk. We'll catch you later. Take it easy. Hey, guys. This has been a Trimble Media production. Thank you for listening to SketchUp Talk. If you liked what you heard here today and you have an idea for an episode or a guest, you can drop us an email at podcast at sketchup.com. If you have a specific question related to how to do something in SketchUp, check out our forum at forums.sketchup.com. Thank you.